Hi, everybody. I'm Jamie Colby, and joining me right now is our very own Allison Barry, who is a defense and uh, how do we call it? War games, actually. Yep, but up in that's space. my little thing that I do. I my love little it. War game segment. Yep. I <laughs> love it, Allison. Thank you, Jamie. And the reason I want to emphasize war games is because there's so much traffic going on in space now. You want us to know that we have to have space cops. It does sound like the movie Gravity. Yes, it does. Uh, compelling stuff and what n none of us I think wants to happen in real life is just that sort of situation and that's that's one of the missions of these little space cops uh, they're robotic satellites nano satellites uh, that will be monitoring uh, sort of acting like traffic cops so not running and gunning kicking down door uh, space cops but more uh, traffic cops if you will up in space and the reason why it's such a big threat Jamie that doesn't get talked about a lot and I, I know we've talked about it offline but uh, there's so much space junk up there people would be shocked right now NASA is monitoring at least uh, half a million pieces of debris literally space junk that's floating around up there uh, in addition to all the spacecraft you know the satellites and and such that are up there that people are more familiar with and why should we care about that because our troops for example deployed rely on these satellites to communicate with each other for navigation uh, all sorts of all sorts of things uh, weapons programs uh, I could go on and on yeah um, well there's there's what we know that's going on up there, and then there's all the things we don't know yep. <laughs> uh, that likely is, is playing a part in keeping all of us safe here at home. So does NASA endorse this program, and how have we gotten along without it being to the extent that it is today? Two great questions. Uh, so I'll, I'll tackle the first one. Uh, NASA does know about it. So this is uh, the STAIR mission is what it's called. Uh, and it's the Space-Based Telescopes for Actionable Refinement of Ephemeris. So that's quite a whopper of an acronym. You know how the military loves their acronyms, Jamie, but uh, that's what it is. Uh, so in layman's terms, uh, it's a Lawrence Livermore program. So that's a laboratory people probably, so what we're looking at right now, just to jump in, is uh, the construction of a satellite. Because I thought people might enjoy seeing what it's actually like. You know, I, I don't, we don't often and get these uh, little cheeky peeks at what a space uh, spacecraft or a satellite looks like before it goes up. But uh, circle back, Lawrence Livermore, uh, people are probably familiar with it for uh, building nuclear weapons, kind of in the heyday of the Cold War, uh, and they do lots more things than that. Uh, so I think there's also a great story to show just the huge range of things that some of our greatest minds are working on. But uh, to take your second question, what are we currently doing? Well, the threat is massive because clearly we, we worry about spacecraft, uh, human man stuff up in space, and like we're talking about the effects that damage to our satellites could have down on the ground. Uh, currently, we use ground-based satellites, and it's not great, Jamie. It's a, it's a chicken little sort of situation mm -hmm. where it's so inaccurate. There are 20 thousand about 20,000 false alarms for every accurate warning of a collision up there so you can imagine operators are like eh, is that really a collision do I really need to like you know put down my potato chips and start maneuvering the spacecraft out of the way and by spacecraft I mean uh, you know satellites that's that's what they call it in the business it doesn't have to be a, a one of our big spacecrafts uh, so then you get these collisions and you've got damage uh, and then further space debris so not a great situation so that it'll be a huge difference that we're talking about accuracy right now that's about a kilometer and <laughs> yeah that's what I was going to ask you yeah. how accurate is it uh, when you're talking space that's pretty accurate, isn't it? It is. Uh, fair point. Yes, yeah, space is pretty vast, so a kilometer is awesome. But if a collision is going to happen, we, we, need, we need that kind of laser accuracy, if you will. You've, you've got to narrow it down. And collisions are happening because it is so inaccurate. Um, so the difference with this new system, the, the space cops, they, they've just done a trial run, and it's reduced it from one kilometer down to 100, about 165 feet. So that's, that's pretty monumental. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. My math isn't great. You'll probably have to help me there, but that seems like a lot. Is it a very expect? Listen, the last thing I need to do is help you. I, uh, I want people to know if they think you're interesting here at .com, they should have lunch or dinner with you. Oh, thanks, Jamie. Uh, your credentials are beyond. People should Google you immediately uh, and, and learn more about you because this is just one area of your expertise. Oh, thank you. Uh, back to the math part of it and the accuracy. How much money is available to fund a program like this and who is paying for it? Do we know? Right. So, uh, uh, great questions again. Uh, Funding in the space program is essentially, you know, people are concerned, has shut down. You know, there's been lots of concern and distress. I think it was a favor of the American public, and I, I very strongly disagree with the budgeting decisions that have been made. I think there's a, a, an argument for things being privatized. We're seeing lots of great advances, say, in the space taxi program that they're calling it, which will 
be a little mini kind of spacecraft that can go up and down and ferry around astronauts. That's, that's a privatized program. It's doing really, really well. But NASA is also hugely important and shouldn't be forgotten. Uh, who's funding this? Uh, I'll have to look into that exactly and get back to you. Mm. But Lawrence Livermore gets its funding from government as well as, uh, you know, for, I think Battelle has a partnership with them. So that's kind of a joint uh, an example where it's working well, uh, uh, government and private industry kind of hand in glove. It's so interesting when you think about the war games that are available um, on computers for kids to yeah. play with. And then you think about what's really going on up there. I'm so glad, Allison, that we could have you on to talk about this. Allison Barry, uh, definitely read whatever she's posted at foxnews.com. Learn more about this and other things she's involved in. She sure knows a lot about Homeland Security, too. And Gosh, she's a fellow lawyer, although where you practice, they call you a solicitor. <laughs> oh, I love you it. just had to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, yes, and Allison. we're along over to you for drinks, too, so I'm going to have to connect you. We're in the same studio at some point. <laughs> well, Allison Barry, I didn't stay away on purpose. I'm glad we could talk about this today. Understood. Have a great day. Great to see you. Okay.